Hey, Flower Tribe, it's Kelly Lehman from Cranberry Fields Flower Farm, and I'm coming to you from behind the camera today. Some of our Flower Tribe members have asked for a binge-watching series on hydrangea care, so you asked for it, you got it, Flower Tribe. So I linked a whole bunch of my favorite hydrangea care videos together, and then we put some timestamps on them, which are popping up now, so you can kind of hop over to the ones you're most interested in, or grab a cup of coffee or a glass of wine and binge-watch the entire series. And I hope you guys enjoy this. Let me know if you like it, and I'll create more. Here is a quick recap on how we did the propagation. If you've already seen this, feel free to fast forward to the timestamp that's on the screen right now, and that will bring you right to our update. Another way of getting extra plants for free from your hydrangeas is using some cutting. So what I'll do is I'll come into the plant, and this is usually best to do around springtime before your hydrangeas are flowering, and I'll come to them, I'll look for a branch that doesn't have a flower that's formed just yet. And I'm gonna find one that looks super healthy. It's very green. It's slightly flexible, uh, but it's not like, you know, like super, super, super floppy, but it's also not too hard. I wanna find one that kind of has like some of that newer stem growth on it. And I'm gonna cut it right beneath the set of leaves. I'm gonna cut off this bottom set of leaves. I'm gonna cut off this very middle section here because I don't want it to flower. I'm gonna leave one or two sets of leaves on, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the surface of the leaf because that's where it loses a lot of its moisture. So I'm gonna trim all these leaves in half. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give a little scrape right about here. This is where all the um, hormones are coming, like the growth hormones. So I'm gonna give it just a little bit of a scrape with my scissor, with my fingernail, and to speed up the process, I'm going to use a little bit of routine hormone. And I'll put a link to some of these in uh, Amazon descriptions below. There's a ton of them out on the market. You could find them in your local nurseries also. And if you don't have routine hormone, it's not a big deal. You could just do it without, but this is going to speed up the process. I'm going to dip that spot where I kind of like removed some of that skin. But I'm going to actually dip the whole stem in this. And this is going to speed up the process of allowing the plant to create roots. And then what I'm going to do, and I'll show you what I did here, is I'm going to put it in a little, either a plastic cup or like a tiny planter from like a small plant that I had. It's important that you have some drainage on the bottom because hydrangeas don't like to have soggy roots. And what I did was I just put it in a medium that's either like vermiculite because that's a little bit less heavy than regular soils. It allows the plants to stretch out more, or perlite. Or sometimes I'll do a mixture of them. And what I do is I'll show you what happened in this plant here. I've actually got two little cuttings in here. I wound up putting them in here, and this is a, a few weeks old. And I like using a plastic cup because sometimes you can actually see the roots develop right through the plastic cup. And I'll kind of lift it up to show you these roots better. Oops. So look at those gorgeous roots. Isn't that crazy? So this plant is already starting to develop, you know, into its own separate, you know, plants. There's actually two of them in here and it needs a bigger uh, vessel. So what I'm going to do is kind of separate them. It's a better idea to just do one per cup. I don't know why I did two in this one, but now I've got two gorgeous hydrangea plants and you can tell they're really really flourishing this is you know coming out this is used to be that little tiny baby little node and it's going to be a brand new beautiful stem very soon and these guys are ready to be planted into a larger pot right now and so this is what one of my larger ones looks like and i'm going to wait until probably like you know like maybe mid-september to put this in the ground i want to make sure that i have at least six weeks before the first uh ground freeze to let these roots get established in this actual garden home and then i'm going to have brand new hydrangea plants so that's one of my favorite tips on how to get free plants from your gardens so i wanted to give you an update on some of those hydrangeas that we propagated just a few weeks ago and this is what some of uh this is what some of them look like so this one was one of my larger cutting you know a lot of times i'll just you know, you use a cutting that has maybe like one or two leaves on it, it'll be much smaller. But I decided to experiment and use one that had like, I don't know, one, two, three, four, like four or five sets of leaves on it. And I think it did really well. This is like weeks later. I could tell this plant is still thriving. It had its little makeshift greenhouse baggie on top of it. 
and I made sure that it was down underneath this plant the whole time. So it was always in like an indirect sunlight. As you can tell, the rest of these are, it was never in direct sunlight. So that protected it, it kept that moisture in it. The one step that I did not do with this plant though, is I usually cut the leaves and that usually helps the plant by not having so much moisture go to the entire leaves and then it kind of like releases it. So I didn't do that step, but I have to say that it was planted in vermiculite and it's got some amazing roots right now. And I'm gonna kind of dip it in water to show you the roots a little bit better. Normally I would just kind of replant this without doing this, you know, watering cleaning stuff because it's not necessary, but I do want to show you how beautiful they are. So look at all those gorgeous brand new roots. So this plant is ready to go into a bigger pot right now because it's going to start outgrowing this pot. I have a bigger pot right now and it's got a mixture of potting soil, vermiculite, and perlite in here. Now, vermiculite and perlite are great planting mediums because they're kind of loosey-goosey. They don't, um, you know, compact those roots so tightly like potting soil sometimes does. So when I'm babying some plants and I want to let those roots really spread out and grow, I'll wind up using a mixture of them. I mean, you can use any combination. Some people like to just use uh, perlite. Some people like to use perlite and vermiculite. Some people like to use all three. I like to use all three at this stage of the game because I do want my plant to get used to going into like soil, like regular soil, because I want to put this in the garden at the end of the season uh, before things start getting really cold because I want to get it used to my garden and conditions, so I want to do some soil. So right now, I've got some potting soil, vermiculite, uh, a little bit of perlite in here. I already watered this in. I'm going to give it a little more water now because I want to make sure that those roots can really spread out. And I'm actually going to do this. I'm going to like make a little hole with my fingers in the soil because this is about where the plant's going to go. It's almost like digging a hole in your garden. And so I'm going to take this back out. I've got these gorgeous, beautiful roots. I'm going to pop this in the bigger container. And it's going to be good to go. And I'm going to do the same thing now, guys. But I think this time I'm going to not do the makeshift greenhouse over because now I'm going to start like getting this plant used to really being on its own and not being babied too much. So I'm going to put it underneath here. It's still getting protected from that direct sunlight. However, it is getting some sun and I'm going to water it in just a little bit more. So I'm going to give it just another shot of water to make sure that those roots are going to be nice and moist. And know that there's drainage on the bottom of this pot so that the water will run out and it won't let those roots be soggy. And we'll check back on this in just a few weeks. But I want to show you some other things that happened with some of the plants we propagated. This one I absolutely love. This one we planted in a plastic cup. And I love this because you can actually see the roots through the plastic. And this was planted in uh, just vermiculite a few weeks ago. And when I list this plant out, look at all those gorgeous roots. And once again, it's hard to see with the video right now when I have all the vermiculite in it. So I'm going to just dunk it in water just so I can show you guys what it looks like. But you don't have to do this step. But it's absolutely amazing to see how many beautiful roots formed. So isn't that gorgeous? I mean, unbelievable. But as you can tell, these roots are starting to wrap around the plant because this container is too small for it. And what's happening is it's getting something that's known as being root bound. So those plants would continue to wrap around it until the plant, you know, almost kind of like, you know, like suffocates itself. but can't even absorb any water because it gets too tight. So now is the time to, you know, open up this plant here. I'm going to wind up getting, loosening up some of those roots so that they're more natural. They're not in that circular formation. I'm being very gentle. And I'm going to use our light vermiculite potting soil all in here. I'm going to make a little hole in here so it's easy for those roots to kind of get adjusted without snapping, you know, away as I'm pushing it in here. I never want to push it in. I want to be gentle. And so I'm going to put this in here. I'm going to lightly put those planting mediums around it. And this was already moistened with water, but I'm going to put a little extra shot of water in here to make sure that those roots don't dry out. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put this right in a safe place next to its sister plant there. I'm going to move some of these guys over a bit. And yeah, this is so fun. And guys, I want you to see like just some interesting things. So this is 
one that I put here, it hardly had any leaves at all. I mean, this looks like it was, you know, like the Charlie Brown hydrangea. So I'm curious if this even did take root because it hardly had any leaves whatsoever. Um, so let's just take a peek. So yeah, listen, not too much going on there, but listen, it still is rooting. So I'm going to give it a shot. But this was very interesting that it just had this little, a little tiny, it was actually just like a little node that actually went up growing. This was like an accidental cutting, but yeah, I'm going to give it a shot. Now I will check in on that guy in a little bit, but this was really interesting. I thought this was kind of a cute idea. I had like old corsage boxes and this just shows you like sometimes you can just kind of work with what you've got. I found an old corsage box that I had. And so what I do with I put some of the perlite in here. I, you know, I made it really wet. I put some holes in the bottom so there was drainage. And I wound up putting this cutting in here. And I have to tell you, look, it worked. I have a whole bunch of beautiful roots on this plant. So I'm going to let this, you know, keep doing its thing. I'm going to make sure that I add more water to this because it got a little dry. And the same thing with its sister. So beautiful roots here. Uh, I'm going to once again put both of these gals back, water it, put it back in this little greenhouse and I'm gonna put it back I'm gonna add a little water and then I'm gonna wind up putting it back underneath and it's a little protective spot here and then another thing that I wanted to show you so many things to show you done all right this was another um experiment I know some people said that they try to propagate their hydrangeas you know, just by putting it in water. And I have to say, this is, I find this to be the most challenging method because like 70% of the time that I try this, these stems wind up rotting out. They get like really brown, they get really yucky before anything starts happening. However, I was fortunate to have this stem push forth some really great, well, like tiny roots, but you know, I was kind of excited that it happened. And I realized that they're coming from like right above where those nodes were once again, those little leaf nodes, because that's where like all the growth hormones are. So I found it worked better if I didn't do that scratching than I did with the other plants. So I scratched down here and I think it might have even stopped these roots from coming out. So I had better luck with just leaving it alone. I had to submerge through water. And I do have to say I changed the water every day because the water gets super yucky super fast. Uh, but that's just another method. And here it is a few weeks later. So what I'm doing is I'm removing that little, you know, greenhouse that we made. And what I'm looking for are little signs of growth, especially like new green leaf growth from the top. And this guy's looking pretty good. I could tell that he's got uh, some nice growth. And as I'm looking down on top, I could tell that there's a whole bunch of roots. And if I give it a little bit of a tug, I can feel that it's a little bit hard to tug away, which is a great sign that there's beautiful roots that are formed. And look at all these gorgeous roots that are forming down here. So this is a beautiful, beautiful hydrangea that I'm going to wind up planting in my garden now because it's getting cooler. It's uh, the beginning of September and I want to get it in the ground at least six weeks before the ground freezes. So this is a really good one to pick. And here's another one. I'm going to show you some of these other ones. This one uh, was at one point super small and I've actually already transplanted this into a larger container because it started out looking something like this. A lot of times I'll start my cuttings in uh, little Dixie cups with little holes poked in the bottom for drainage because you can see the roots growing actually from like the, you know, like the clear container. And this one had some beautiful roots. It was about this size when I transplanted it into this larger container. So if you really want to baby your hydrangeas and get like maximum uh, chances of them surviving, you can baby them by just keep transplanting them into larger pots until they're ready to be planted uh, in the fall. So this guy's ready. Um, I'm actually going to give this one a couple more weeks in a larger container. I'm actually going to put this one in the garden and I'm going to put this one in this little pot because this guy's got some massive roots. So if I you list this, you can see this is a whole root ball already. This is a beautiful size root ball to put into the ground. But I'm going to make sure that I put them in a protected area and I'll show you what I mean by that. So let's walk over to my garden and I'm going to show you how I put them in the ground. So guys, I chose a spot in my garden that pretty much uh, protected from the strong wind and the storms that are going to come this winter. I've got some Annabelle hydrangeas on one side of this stem 
And I've got a little bit of roses, some teenies uh, that are protected here. So these guys aren't like all on their own in like a hot, scorching, full sun area. So this gets morning sun, like six to eight hours of morning sun, and then some afternoon shade. And once again, it's kind of got some protection here because these are like really delicate plants right now. They're really, really baby. So what I did was I dug into the garden. I also know that I have well-drained soil here because hydrangeas love well-drained soil. So I dug a hole that was about twice the width, but the same height as the plant because I want those roots to be able to stretch out very easily. So I'm gonna keep chopping away here, chopping away. So when you take a look at what this little root ball looks like, once again, this hole was about twice the width so that those roots can easily establish themselves once I fill it in. And right now, it looks to be about, um, I think I might have to fill in some of this because I don't want it to, to sit too low. So I'm going to put it a little more soil in here. I want it to be about ground level. And I'm going to choose the best looking side of the plant, which I think. And then I'm going to just fill it in. And then I wind up sprinkling a little bit of mulch around here. And I'm gonna give it some water to get it started. And this guy's all good to go once that mulch is on top. And I'm gonna do the same thing with these other two holes here. Okay, now these guys are all set to go. Now my spacing might be a little bit tight with these, but what I'll do is as they start to mature, if I find out that they're crowding each other out, because they do look a little bit close to me right now, but as they start to crowd each other out, I'll wind up digging them up in the fall of a future year, and I'll put them in another spot in my garden where I think they're gonna be happy, but they might just be happy here, so we'll kind of play that by ear. So guys, I think we're gonna have some gorgeous hydrangeas uh, that are gonna do really well here, and this is one way to, to propagate your hydrangeas. And then you could take them, you can also give them to friends or family, and I will give you an update on these hydrangeas in just a few weeks, so we'll kind of watch them throughout the years. Thanks so much for joining us. I want to give you some quick tips on what I do with my hydrangeas in fall. So here we are in my New Jersey planting hardiness zone six garden and it's fall. It's towards like the end of fall. We're in November now and I wanted to show you what some of my limelight hydrangeas look like and what some of my mop head hydrangeas look like and I'm going to tell you what I do and what I don't do to these hydrangeas at this time of year. So this is my limelight hydrangea. I have a boatload of these. They are one of the easiest hydrangeas to grow. So if you're new to the hydrangea game, I highly recommend you getting a limelight hydrangea. They are spectacular when they are in their prime. They usually start to bloom uh, in like the beginning. Well, here in New Jersey, I usually start getting blooms from them towards like the end of spring, early summer, and they bloom all the way until the first frost. So this tree started off as a white creamy, gorgeous blooming plant, had beautiful white blooms on it. And up until about maybe a week ago, it had gorgeous kind of like lime green with a semi like maroon tint on them. That's kind of like the, the dried flower that it turned to on the stem. So they make for a great um, you know, like like dried cut flower. They make for like spectacular giant dry cut flower arrangements. Uh, but here's what I do with them this time of year. I literally walk past them and leave them alone. This is what I do. I look at them and I, you know, give them a hello and I walk right past them. So I don't prune these back. Uh, they do come in on what's known as new growth towards like, you know, like the beginning of spring. So if you did want to cut some of these old blooms off because you don't like the way they look, uh, you're welcome to. Um, it might start a little bit of a growth spurt for some plants that aren't yet dormant. Um, but for the most part, I will leave mine alone. So I don't uh, like to do things in my garden that I don't, I don't have to do. So I, you know, I usually leave a lot of my hydrangeas alone. I don't prune back many of them. And so sometimes the only time that I will cut some of these blooms off are if there's like a really super heavy colossal bloom that I think might crack off when there's some snow. And let me come all over to this um, limelight hydrangea tree here to kind of show you what I mean. These aren't even like super colossal, but like this guy might be like a prime candidate. Like I might cut this one off because uh, if there's a lot of snow on branches like this, it might actually wind up cracking, you know, like cracking off that branch. But this isn't even that big. I mean, some of them were much bigger. So if they were much bigger 
um, stems that were like super droopy and I was afraid that the stem looked like it was going to crack off the, the plant in the middle of winter. I really don't want to happen, that to happen. So I might actually just give that like a little bit of a deadheading, which means I would kind of cut it here. But guys, listen, if you need to clean up your hydrangeas, you know, you don't care, um, you know, about, you know, cutting back a, a lot of those, you know, like a lot of that growth, and then, then it's not a big deal. You probably won't spurn a growth spurt if you just do like a little bit of a trimming. And if you do want to get rid of the brown heads, by all means, you know, go ahead. But I would just give it like a little deadheading, which means you're just going to give it a clip, you know, like a little bit um, right above a set of leaves that are not too far down the branch because you don't want to do a heavy, heavy pruning this time of year. And what I mean by that is like, you know, really getting into the plant and cutting off like a third of the plant. That's considered a heavy pruning. And sometimes that will spurn like a growth spurt. And you don't really want to do that um, in fall because then you're going to have some new growth and that new growth is probably going to get frozen off by the winter temperatures. And it's just not ideal for the plant. It's doing a lot of work making that new growth for no reason. So for the most part, I leave these blooms on my hydrangeas. I think it makes for like a beautiful like winter interest. And a lot of you have written in questions. You know, what do I do about my hydrangeas? The leaves are all brown. They look horrible. Uh, this is what a lot of my hydrangea leaves look like this time of year. And it's not a big deal. A lot of these spots are just caused by moisture on the leaf. And then these temperatures get super cold, especially at night. And it just causes those brown spots. So it's very normal. These are what my, this is like a uh, endless summer. This is what they look like now because we have like that frost. And so I'm basically just going to leave this plant alone. A lot of people are, you know, are writing and, oh my gosh, you know, should I go over there and cut everything off? And is it disease? It's just dormant right now. And it just means that those, you know, those leaves basically got really, really cold. They're frozen off. And um, yeah, so that's just, you know, that's just like kind of like the nature of the plant. But know that each of these little green buds in here, these are all going to be next year's flowers. So this is kind of like, you know, like some of that new growth on this old wooded stem. So for Mop Hedge, you've got the wooded stem from last year. You've got the new growth forming, and this is going to be next year's flowers. So you really want to be careful that you don't come in here to your Mop Head hydrangeas and, you know, prune them back because every time that you make a cut, like if I did a cut here, I'd be cutting off all of these flowers here and then I wouldn't have them for next year. So if you can kind of leave them alone, um, unless you need to clean up, like if this hydrangea was spilling over, you know, out of the garden bed, I would go in there, give it like a little bit of a cleanup. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, but for the most part, I like to leave well enough alone. So if you can leave them alone, uh, that's what I would do. And then I just want to show you, um, we did a few hydrangea video showing you how to propagate your own hydrangeas so that, you know, you can have more hydrangeas in your, in your yard for free. And I will put a link to that in our hydrangea you know, list of videos below because that was a super popular one. A lot of people wanted to know how to pop, how to propagate them. And this is what some of our cuttings look like. We had put them in the ground a few weeks ago and they're thriving. They're looking really terrific. We've got a little bit of mulch kind of protecting them. I like leaving these leaves in place. I don't, you know, usually take the leaves away. I think that's an extra form of protection for them. And so, yeah, these guys are looking really, really great. We popped them in the ground and, um, you know, we propagated them a few months ago and then kind of babied them in little pots and containers. And they're doing terrific. So that's a little update on our hydrangea propagation. And that's what my secret garden looks like in November. Okay, guys, keep those comments coming and those questions coming because a lot of the questions that you send me in comments below, I wind up making future videos over. Okay, guys, see you in the next video. So it's hydrangea season here in my New Jersey garden and flower farm. And what I love to do is make gorgeous arrangements. Uh, we sell them here locally in town. And we also uh, have a Flowers of the Month Club. And I love gifting them to my family and friends. And so these are some of the steps that I take uh, to make sure that I have gorgeous blooms uh, to gift to other people and to sell. So I usually go out in the morning. You want to make sure that you're cutting your hydrangeas early morning before the blooms start to get exhausted from the sunlight. So morning is best for cuttings, and it's even a really good idea if you can remember uh, to try to water your plants the day before. So it's really great if they are super hydrated and always water in the morning and at the base of the plant. Those are key. You never want to water overhead at night because sometimes that causes some of those fungal issues. So water them the day before at the base of the plant, 
cut them early morning. And what you're going to do is you're going to make sure that you plunge them in water right away because hydrangeas have um, something with their stem. And if you've ever had hydrangea arrangements before, you'll know that a lot of times these blooms will flop prematurely in the vase. And that's because they've got like a sap that's running through uh, the stems. And a lot of times that will clog up the stems and it will prevent the water from coming up. So a few things that you can do to prevent that from happening is as soon as you cut your hydrangeas, you're gonna always give it a cut on a diagonal. You're gonna make sure that you have a clean set of pruners. Cut it at a diagonal. That diagonal is going to allow for maximum water absorption when it's on an angle like that. And also when it sits in the vase, it's going to wind up sitting like this so the water can continue to go up the stem instead of sitting flat where like the glass actually kind of blocks some of it. So a diagonal cut is best. And you can also use a little bit of alum powder. This is just a spice that you can find in most of your local food stores or online, Amazon, I'll put a little link in descriptions below. And this spice often kind of, um, you know, helps to have that water go up the stems easier. And so it'll actually allow that water absorption to happen quicker. And so what happens is I'm gonna wind up giving another quick clip because these clog up really fast. So another quick, oh, that one wasn't so good. Quick diagonal cut. I'm going to dip it in the alum powder. and then I'm gonna plunge it right into the water. I don't wanna to have too much time go uh, between the time that I do that because once again, it starts to scab over sometimes. Sometimes you'll have it, um, like the bottom of the stem will start to scab over. Um, another thing that I do is I make sure that I keep these flowers away from direct sunlight. So I never put them in front of a, uh, a window. I keep them away from my stoves. Uh, I want to make sure that it doesn't have a lot of heat on them because when hydrangea blooms are exposed to heat, a lot of times they will flop. Now, if this does happen, what you could do is simply remove the bloom from the arrangement and you could wind up giving it just a fresh clip, plunging it back in water and keeping it in a cool spot. And then that should bring that bloom kind of like back to its full self. Now, another thing that I like to do is um, I remove the leaves from my plants before I put them in an arrangement. And I realized that I didn't do that with this one. I think I was in a hurry and I just kind of like, you know, put it in here real fast. I'll remove the extra leaves that are on uh, the plant because right now when these leaves are on here, the water's gonna come up the stem and it's going to hydrate all of these leaves and it's gonna leave less water for the bloom itself. So I'm gonna help out the plant by removing all the excess leaves that are on the stem. Get rid of all these. Sometimes I'll leave a couple on top just because they look pretty in the arrangement, but all the ones that you're not going to see, I'm definitely going to remove, especially the ones that are damaged because that just makes uh, the arrangement, you know, look kind of crummy. And I also want to make sure I never have leaves on the bottom of the stem that are in the water because that can cause bacteria in the water. So I'm going to give it another fresh cut because as I was talking, I might've had like a little scab over that sap might've kind of clogged it up. Fresh cut diagonal, and I'm going to plunge it right back into that phase of water. You also want to make sure that your tips are in the water. Sometimes I know that I'll do things really fast and I won't do them right. And sometimes I won't fill up my vases high enough. Uh, so you're going to want to make sure that you have nice, full, beautiful vases filled with water. And you also want to make sure that you change the water every two days because that's going to get rid of all the bacteria that might have started to form uh, in the water. And that's going to keep your plant happier and it's going to help that water to absorb faster. So here's a quick florist power tip. When I um, put my hydrangeas in vases like this, a lot of times we'll just use a rubber band because if you just plunk them in a vase, a lot of times they just kind of flop over, they wind up popping out, the stems wind up coming out of the water. And if you're transporting them to bring to a friend or a family member, they're gonna wind up like falling out uh, in transit. So I just put a little rubber band on the bottom that kind of keeps everybody together and it's just a really super easy way to make an arrangement. Guys, a lot of times as I'm cutting blooms from my hydrangea plant, I'll just have like one or two like single blooms and you can use like the single bud vases for those. They're absolutely beautiful. I'll try to find a couple links to those and put them uh, in descriptions below from Amazon. Uh, but if you're just cleaning up your plant, instead of throwing out some of those tiny blooms or throwing out some of those blooms that have like a big flower head where some of it still looks fresh, but the rest of it looks crummy, you can just cut them out and put them in those little um, vase jars. So let me show you what one of those looks like. 
Here's one of those cute little bud vases. I don't know, it looks like a little mini, mini mason jar, just enough to hold one balloon, but look how cute that is in my bathroom. So guys, another tip to keep that water flow going through that stem very easily is to dip the bottom of the tips in some boiling water. You simply dip the stems in boiling water for about 30 seconds, uh, not any longer than that, and make sure that the actual flower blooms are not near the steam, otherwise they will droop. One of my favorite florist power tips is to try to harden off the stems if you can. And the way that I do that is I will cut these blooms, like I said, early morning. So they're you know, nice, nice and hydrated. I'll let them kind of rest either inside or in my garage or in my barn to kind of get out of whatever heat that they did have. And once I let them kind of, you know, like get room temperature, they kind of, you know, acclimate to the house. I will pop them in the refrigerator, but I want to make sure that I don't put them near any fruits or vegetables because fruits or vegetables will give off a gas that flowers don't like and it actually makes them like bloom and wilt a little premature. So I'm going to keep them in its own little spot for at least an hour. Uh, the best that would be overnight if that's at all possible. And that's going to make those stems a little bit sturdier and then it's going to help with that water absorption. So I'm going to check on you in just a bit. You want to make sure that your hydrangeas are not in front of a window where it's getting direct sunlight because that's just going to make the hydrangeas flop from the heat. And you're also going to make sure that your hydrangeas are not near a stove where there's like boiling water or any kind of heat or near any kind of heat ducts. So find a nice place on your counter or someplace else where it doesn't have those heat sources and it's going to stay nice and cool, and it's going to stay out of direct sunlight, and that's gonna keep your flowers looking fresher longer. Another thing I do with some of those little tiny blooms that I just wanted to cut out of the plant, if they're semi-dried or dried, you can actually add them to either fresh or dried flower arrangements by just kind of placing them anywhere you like to fluff out the arrangement or to give it some height, because once they start to dry out, they no longer need water to look terrific. So this is a beautiful, beautiful little tiny piece of a bloom, but it just added like another inch of height to this arrangement. And it's going to stay looking beautiful like this. And you can also give some of these blooms a little shot of florist spray paint, and that will make the color a little bit brighter. So this is a spray paint that's just for flowers. This one's actually called Just for Flowers, but there's a lot of them on the market. I'll put a link to some of those in the descriptions below. You can buy them on Amazon if you like, or in your local, like Michael's or AC Moore's, or some of your garden centers might have them. But this is made just for flowers. And uh, I'm gonna get rid of that little grasshopper. And I'm gonna give it a little spray. And it's just going to brighten up some of those dried blooms. And now these are gonna dry and you're gonna have a more vibrant looking dry flower arrangement. You can also use them on some of the flowers uh, that are still fresh. So you don't have to just wait until your, your flowers dry out. Uh, this one over here is uh, pretty fresh. I don't wanna bother Lucy with this. So I'm gonna actually show you one over here that's, that's kind of fresh and give it a spray. As long as you don't do it when the flower is on the stem, that's fine. Here's a really simple trick. If you have a hydrangea that you've cut from your garden and it has either a bent neck or a neck that's kind of you know, like semi-bent over or it almost looks like it's semi-crushed, if you can find the straws that are used for smoothies, they have, you know, like a larger opening, and just put it, in, uh, you know, put the stem inside of it and then push it all the way up to its highest point and that will act as a support because what you want to do is make sure that the water can continue to come up that stem into the bloom and a lot of times though that bent neck will continue to bend until it kind of makes it so that the water can't get up but this tube is going to stop that from happening it's going to act as like a support system and as long as that water continues to travel up the stem it's going to keep that bloom fresh so this bloom had a bent you know still has a bent neck but it straightened it out and this has been in water for about a week right now and that's my tip for today i want to show you how i care for some of my hydrangeas at this time of the year so I'm sitting in front of a whole bunch of my endless summer hydrangea, and um, I guess it's pretty apparent that I didn't get blooms from them yet this year. And I think this happened to a lot of people this year. The reason why these hydrangeas didn't bloom is because we had a really, really warm winter, and then we had a cold snap in the spring. And what happened was that cold snap wound up freezing off a lot of the buds that were put in place on the old wood. And I'm gonna try to show you one of those pieces right now. 
So each of these kind of burnt out, frozen off buds was supposed to be uh, where the flowers were going to come from, but they were frozen off uh, by that cold blast that we got in late spring. And so I don't have flowers. I don't have my first uh, rush of blooms that usually come from my endless summer. So a lot of you have moped hydrangeas that are considered rebloomers, uh, just like this. And I know a lot of people have, you know, written in the comments, how come my hydrangeas didn't bloom? And that's probably the reason why. But I'm not too worried because I know that these rebloomers will give me a second flush of flowers. And that comes from all the new green growth that came in from, um, you know, like that new growth that came in from the ground. So the blooms that were actually frozen off were the blooms that were on that old wood that was put in place last year because a lot of these start forming their blooms on old wood and they start forming in August. So these are some steps that I'm gonna to take to make sure that this is going to bloom beautifully by the end of the summer. Uh, and then I'm gonna have gorgeous blooms next year also. So what I'm doing right now is I'm coming in here and I'm doing like a little cleanup of my plant. Uh, I know that other Flower Tribe members have said to me, I know you're not supposed to prune your hydrangeas in summer, which is true, but you could give it a cleanup, especially if it's kind of spilling over onto sidewalks or onto places that you don't want it to be or if it's just getting too tall. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is kind of come in here and clean up some of these uh, blooms that are coming, spilling over the side. So guys, I'm coming to this hydrangea that I see is starting to get a little bit too overgrown out of the bed. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a clip. I'm going to take this and I'm going to give it a clip right above a fresh set of leaves. But instead of getting rid of the stem now, I'm going to actually make a cutting out of it. And guys, I made a really detailed uh, video showing you exactly how to make cuttings so you can propagate some of your hydrangeas. Uh, but I'm just gonna do it like the quick way right now. I'm gonna cut some of these leaves. I'm actually gonna cut this center leaf right out. I'm gonna give it a little scrape. I'm gonna dip it in some rooting hormone. And there's all different types of rooting hormones you can use. And right now I've got a little bit of perlite in this cup that I poked holes with using a hot fork. So I had like the fork tips were very hot. I poked some holes in them. One of the easiest ways to do that is to take a fork, just heat up the tips of the fork. You don't want to make it too hot, otherwise it's going to burn your hand as the heat travels up. So it's just the tips. And he's gently just putting it into the plastic. And then you've got some super easy to create holes on the bottom of your cup. And I put some water here because I want to make sure that it had drainage. Get the water coming out. And now I'm just going to put my cutting in here. And I'm going to wind up placing it in a place that's not in direct sunlight, but still it will get some sun, probably like right underneath here. And within a few weeks, I'm going to have gorgeous roots and I'm going to have a brand new hydrangea plant. To make your success rate a little bit higher with these propagations, you can add a little Ziploc bag over the top of your rooting. And that just creates what's kind of like a little tiny miniature greenhouse. So it keeps that moisture trapped inside. The plant will not dry out because these leaves are really delicate. And sometimes if you don't cover them, the plant dries out before the roots are, you know, like established. So I keep this over here. You can tell I have a whole bunch going on down here. Sometimes I'll keep the bag in place with like a little pencil. And you can see what some of my other hydrangeas look like right now that I'm propagating. And once again, they are not in direct sunlight. They're uh, in the shade of uh, this other hydrangea plant that I have. So I have a whole bunch going on. And here's, here's kind of like that greenhouse effect again. So you can see this one doesn't have a pencil holding it up, but it's fine. So sometimes it's easier just to keep it simple. And some of these I also mix with a little bit of vermiculite and uh, perlite. So either combination is fine. Sometimes I'll just use vermiculite, uh, but you can use any of those combinations. This is what one of my cuttings looks like. This has got to be about four or five weeks old. Oh, I'm kind of lifting the plant out as I'm lifting the bag. But I want to show you what some of these beautiful roots look like. And this one I used uh, vermiculite, just pure vermiculite. But if I scratch it away a couple weeks later, you're going to see beautiful, beautiful roots right there. I realized it was hard to see before with all the vermiculite on it, so let me just give it a little cleansing dip here. Now you can really see those beautiful roots. I'm going to let this plant stay in the vermiculite or perlite for a few more weeks to get stronger before I replant it in the garden.
While I'm here, I'm also taking a look at some interesting things like this branch that I see is kind of like flopping on the ground over here. So it's kind of on the ground. And what's going to happen is this plant is going to want to self-propagate. So a lot of times you'll see the stems laying on the ground. You can give it a little bit of help if you want to create a new plant. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll just move away some of the mulch, some of the dirt. I will clip off the top because I don't want it to flower. I want it to put all of its energy into creating new plants. I'm going to get rid of some of these damaged leaves. And I'm going to wind up giving it a little bit of a scrape down here. And you could just use your fingernail. Sometimes I just scrape some of that stem off. And here you can either use some rooting hormone like I just did. And if you don't have rooting hormone, it's not a big deal. This just speeds up the process. To lay that in the ground, cover it with some of that dirt. And then I'm going to put a rock on top. And eventually, this plant is going to form a whole bunch of brand new roots. And then I'm going to have a brand new hydrangea. And I showed you exactly how we wind up cutting that from the mother plant in another video. Uh, and I will link all of my hydrangea videos in my playlist at the end of this video. Another step that I take for my hydrangea care in July is I will wind up giving uh, a little bit of rose tone fertilizer to each of my mop heads. Now, rose tone is terrific. I use this. Um, for my hydrangeas when I do fertilize. Now, a lot of you that watch the channel know that a lot of times I don't fertilize any of my hydrangeas. If they're doing really well, I leave them alone. I don't fertilize them. I'm a big fan of just keeping it super simple. And what happens is a lot of people wind up over fertilizing their hydrangeas and they wind up getting gorgeous, beautiful green leaves and they don't have any flowers. So sometimes the plant just has too much nitrogen in it uh, because people over fertilize. And also sometimes lawn fertilizers run into their flower beds and that's really high in nitrogen. So that might be another reason why some of your hydrangeas aren't uh, blooming. But at this point, these guys aren't looking very good. We had that, you know, crazy spring zap and I really want to encourage those blooms to come through. So I see I have a lot of, you know, like nice green growth and I'm gonna fertilize them now, but I'm gonna make sure that I don't fertilize them after like the 1st of August. Gardeners in other states might wind up still fertilizing some of their hydrangeas up until mid-August. It kind of depends on your neck of the woods. But in my neck of the woods, New Jersey, I usually don't do this after August 1st. Because if I fertilize these going into their dormant season, they're gonna wind up putting uh, up a lot of brand new growth and that's gonna wind up probably wind up, you know, like, like snapping off or freezing off because they're just not gonna be sturdy enough. So only do the step um, in like, you know, up until like maybe the first of, of August or like a little bit after that, because uh, you don't wanna fertilize going into that dormant period. So let's get into this. So I've got my rose tone. I've got like a little cup going on over here. Hold the bag over here. And I'm going to look for the drip line of my hydrangea. Now the drip line of a hydrangea or the drip line of any plant is where the water runs off of it. So when it rained last night, there was a whole bunch of water and it was running off of these leaves. And so where it kind of hit the ground is considered the drip line. And the reason why you fertilize by the drip line is because you don't want to bump up that fertilizer against the base of the plant because you can burn the plant if you bump it up against it. I have to get rid of that weed. Anyway, so I'm going to just kind of go around this. I'm going to take my little like trowel or like a little bit of rake if you want, because you want to kind of scratch it into the soil. So what I'm going to do is make like a little moat. I'm going to go around the entire plant and I'm just going to give it a little bit of a sprinkling. You do this on my little entire plant. And then I'm just going to kind of scratch it into the soil about an inch deep. And then it kind of needs some water to get it activated. So it's going to rain later on this afternoon, so I'm not going to bother watering it in because I know that it's going to get that good rain to kind of activate it. And that's going to encourage this plant, um, you know, to like give me some beautiful, beautiful blooms. I only occasionally will fertilize my mop head hydrangeas after spring. And I don't do this step with my limelight hydrangeas, my panicles, my smooth hydrangeas, because they all come in on new growth and they don't need that second dose. Another thing that I'm doing this time of year is I'm taking a look at the blooms that did make it and I'm finding the ones that are kind of spent, uh, they're kind of washed out. Um, some flower pride members have said, you know, why do my hydrangeas lose their color? And guys, this happens to me too. It's just a matter of the sun hitting it. Um, you know, a lot of it gets kind of washed out. 
if you can plant your hydrangeas in a place where they get morning sun and afternoon shade, a lot of times that helps keep the color intact better. But these guys uh, are in a whole bunch of sun, so they wash out very quickly. But what I'm gonna do is come in here and give them a snip. And I am gonna make like a beautiful bouquet out of some of these flowers that are pretty much spent uh, instead of leaving them on the plant and having the plant have to take care of it. And another thing that's gonna happen when I clip off this flower is I'm gonna encourage two more flowers to come from it next year. And I'll show you how that works. I'm gonna go down to a fresh set of leaves and also a fresh set of leaf nodes. And the leaf nodes look like this. See this here? Should be one on the other side too. So these are the leaf nodes. One, two. Next year, both of these are going to give me, hopefully, stems that will give me beautiful flowers. And I'm going to ensure that this happens because I'm going to give it a clip right above those leaf nodes. And give it a clip. But in the meantime, I'm going to take this bloom and I'm going to plunk it right in water. I'm going to get rid of these leaves because when it goes in the water, I don't want the stem to have to bring the water up through those leaves because that's going to be less water that's going to go to my bloom. And this will still stay fresh uh, for quite a while. And then it's going to dry out to a beautiful dry cut flower as long as I don't put it in direct sunlight in my kitchen. So I'm going to plunk this right in some water. And I made another video showing you how to make beautiful bouquets and how to dry out your hydrangeas. And once again, that will be linked in our hydrangea playlist. But I want to show you one quick florist power tip that I do with this bloom because it is a little bit washed out and I can pretty much spruce it up with a little bit of floral spray paint. So I'm gonna take some floral spray paint, and guys, this is just for flowers. It's not um, like actual spray paint. And there's a whole bunch of different um, brands of these, different varieties. I'll put a link to this one in descriptions below. And I'm basically just going to spray some of this on this bloom. I'm making sure that the bloom isn't wet, so don't do this after it rains, otherwise it's gonna probably just run off of it. And it comes in all different colors, greens, purples, reds, magentas, pink, you name it. Super fun. And now I'm gonna plunk it in the water. Guys, um, never paint your flowers when it's actually on the stem because it's gonna prevent the flower from like flourishing. All right, so this guy looks great. And this is what one of our arrangements looks like. And what we did was we used a whole bunch of these blooms uh, that were, you know, like kind of coming in on some of my other mop head hydrangeas. These were cut before they dried out, but I do love them. This is going out the barn door today. And we mixed them with some of our Annabelle hydrangeas. And I want to show you something that I do to my Annabelle hydrangeas this time of year, because a lot of times they're flopping. So let's take a walk over to the Annabelles. So this is what a lot of my Annabelle hydrangeas look like this year. I wound up pruning them back in the beginning of spring, and I usually do not do that because when I don't do that, I have smaller blooms and it has a better network of old wood stems that usually holds it up. But I did prune them back this year because I wasn't getting as many blooms as I used to get, so it gave a kind of a recharge, um, and this is what it looks like now. So I have all these heavy blooms, and we had a huge rainstorm. Everything kind of flopped over, and what I did was I put in some uh, gardener's tape a while ago. I just kind of wrapped it around the plant to keep it in place. And this worked out really well until the blooms got really, really tall and really, really heavy. So I needed to add a step. Instead of just tying some gardening tape around it, I wound up doing this. And you can tell this plant is so much more upright. It's standing up. So we have two dowels back here, one, two. And what we did was we wrapped a whole bunch of the gardener's tape around the top of the, you know, one of the tallest, you know, spots on the dowel, or like almost the tallest spot. And then we wrapped it around the plant. You can tell it kind of goes around the plant. Put it above a set of leaves because the leaves are also going to prevent the tape from slipping down. And then we just, you know, kind of like tied it up like this. And now you can tell how beautiful these Annabelles are standing up. Thank you so much for joining us in this video. And please say hi to us over on my Cranberry Fields Instagram page. You can also find us on TikTok. And I made a whole bunch of podcasts for you. You can find those wherever you listen to your podcast. And know that I made a whole bunch of online flower courses for you with easy to follow tips on how to grow beautiful flowers just like these in your own garden. I will put all of those in descriptions below. And please also let me know where you're viewing this from in this great big beautiful world. I love to see how our flower tribe is growing around the globe each week. Also check out our Kelly Lehman's Flower Tribe Facebook group because there's thousands of gardeners from all over the world and they're asking and answering loads of garden questions over there. And know that YouTube has allowed me to have a super thanks uh, button attached to this channel. And if you'd like to buy us a cup of coffee or I'll let us know if you appreciate these videos, uh, that would be terrific. Or you could just give us a like or a comment below. I would appreciate that. And I will see you guys in the next video. Mm -hmm.
Thank you.